Okay, in this video, we're going to start talking about rational functions. We're going to define them. We're going to discuss something called discontinuities. Uh, discontinuities have to do with the domain of a rational function. So first, a rational function is just a polynomial divided by another polynomial. Now we've, we've covered polynomials extensively, and so we know a lot of different things about them. Uh, but formal definition of a rational function is where p and p of x and q of x are polynomials and q of x is not equal to zero, f of x is a rational function, f of x being the quotient of p of x and q of x. So some examples, and uh, I mean, these are, these are basic examples of uh, rational functions, but f of x is equal to x divided by x minus one. Like that is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Another one, f of x is equal to x squared divided by x squared minus x minus 6. That's another very simple polynomial. They get a lot more complicated than that, but when it comes to how we deal with them and all the different information we can extract from one, it's the same no matter how complex it gets. One of those pieces of information that we can take out of, a rational, of, 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 of any function, but a rational function, is the domain. And recall that the domain of a function is just a set of real number inputs that produce real number outputs. So they're the values that you can plug in for x, real, real number values that you can plug in for x to get real numbers out. For a polynomial, for normal polynomials, we didn't have to consider this at all because the domain of every polynomial is just all real numbers. It's negative infinity to infinity. However, for a rational function, because we're dividing and we're not in math, we're not allowed to divide by zero, we can get we can get some domain restriction. So for example, if f of x was my rational function and it consisted of some polynomial p of x divided by some polynomial q of x, then when q of x is equal to zero, we would have domain restrictions. So let's look at an example of what that would what that would look like. Okay, so where are the domain restrictions of this function? This function is f of x is equal to, in the numerator, 3x squared plus 4x minus 4, and the denominator, 5x squared minus 20. Now, we need to figure out where does the denominator, 5x squared minus 20, uh, equal 0. And so to do that, like we can just we can rewrite the numerator for now. This is something we are going to factor later. Okay, both 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 divided by... Now, notice in the denominator, we can factor out a 5, and we'd have x squared minus 4. Uh oh, that's a, perfect, that's a difference of perfect squares. So we could go one step further here and factor this denominator to 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, if we wanted to know what values of x make the denominator 0, we would just say we would set the denominator to go 0 and solve for x. So we'd say 0 is equal to the new denominator, or the, the factor denominator, 5 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2. And using the zero product property, we would see that x equals 2 and negative 2. Both the values of 2 and negative 2 would make the denominator equal 0. And that can't be, so really what we have is that x cannot equal 2 and negative 2. And then if we wanted to say, like, everything else is fine. Every other x value can plug into this. And so if we're then asked, after we've identified the domain restrictions, if we're asked what's the domain, all we need to do is write that in, our, in interval notation. So you do that from left to right. You go negative infinity, that's all the way to the left, all the way up to negative 2, not including negative 2. Union, everything from negative 2 to 2 is okay, but not including 2. And then everything from 2 to infinity, not including 2 or infinity, of course. And so that's how you would write the domain of this function f of x in interval notation. All right, when it comes to those restrictions in the domain, or those, uh, those things that are called discontinuities, one type of discontinuity is an asymptote. An asymptote has another name. It's also called an infinite discontinuity and what it means basically is this if you had a function and let's and and we and you started to evaluate that function for some value and in this case we're, we're saying it's a right it means that you cannot evaluate it for a which means a would make the denominator equal to zero so if you started plugging in numbers really really close to a approaching a from either direction from like the left side of a or from the right side of a like so let's say this is a and the function itself did something like this. What this is saying here is that f, the absolute value of f of x is approaching infinity. Well, f of x is just y. So the outputs, positive or negative y, 
uh, is approaching infinity or y is approaching positive or negative infinity. So let's say, uh, for example, what could be happening is as I start plugging in values that get really close to a, this thing shoot the graph shoots up really far. Okay, so it could it could do something like that where you can't quite evaluate for a, but if you're approaching a from this side, if you're approaching a from this side, you get values of of, neg of negative infinity. If you're approaching a from this side, you get values of positive infinity. This is just an asymptote, and, and graphically, the way we do that, if we're sketching by hand, is to represent it as a, a dotted vertical, a, ver a vertical dotted line. Let me erase some of this here. Okay. Um, now, a vertical asymptotes again also called infinite discontinuities. There's also such thing as a horizontal asymptote. Now, I put horizontal asymptotes in quote there, in quotes there, because there's two differences between a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes cannot be touched. Like the function will never cross the vertical asymptote ever. And that's because if it did, we'd have a violation of, of what a function is, right? We'd have two different outputs for the same input. Um, and so for horizontal asymptotes, they can be crossed. And also what, a, what a, a vertical asymptote does or represents is a restriction in the domain of a function. And a horizontal asymptote does not represent the, the, a restriction in the domain of a function. So what is it? Well, it's just a way that we can determine the end behavior of a polynomial, or sorry, of a rational function. Um, and and the, all that basically is, is as, as you're plugging in really large values for, for x, like really big negative or really big positive values for x, what's happening to f of x? If there's a common thing that's happening there for f of x, uh, as you're plugging in either big positive values or big negative values, then that that thing that's happening is what's called a horizontal asymptote. Let's look at some examples here. Actually, we have, we have to talk about one other kind of, of domain restriction. Okay, when we're talking about uh, rational functions, there's another type of domain restriction that we can have, and it's what's called a hole. And a hole, the, the formal name for a hole is a removable discontinuity. Now, we have an asymptote when we have a domain restriction, meaning that the denominator is equal to zero, and the numerator, that same x value does not make the numerator equal to zero, so it's fine. However, if we have a single x value that makes both the numerator and denominator of a function equal to zero, then we have what's known as a whole. So let's look at this here. We can, we can simplify this polynomial by factoring it, sorry, this rational function by factoring it, x minus one in the numerator, and then this bottom factors to x minus one times x plus three. The bottom was x squared plus two x minus three. Now notice, that tells us that this, this means we can cancel. We have a common factor in both the numerator and denominator. And so this thing would simplify to one divided by x plus three. And so what this, is, what this means is that, is that this, simplified poly, this simplified rational function of one divided by x plus three and this original function of x plus one divided by x squared plus two x minus three are almost completely identical, but obviously there's this one thing that we did here that makes them different. And so in order to actually say that these polynomials are equal, we'd have to write the stipulation here that x cannot equal one because we cannot plug, we, although obviously we can plug one into this, into this polynomial and it'd be fine, we'd have an output. The, the function itself has this limitation where we couldn't have plugged the one in. And so what we can do by plugging that original value of one in because of the restrictions to this function, right, are gonna be x cannot equal negative one and x cannot equal negative three. Sorry, x cannot equal positive one and negative three. Uh, positive one and negative three. Uh, we know that the x, the x equals negative three, that was gonna be an, a vertical asymptote at the, at the line x equals negative three. And then this, line, this x, it cannot equal one, that means there's a hole there. And the way we could find the hole is by plugging this value of one back into my simplified function here. So I can, dis, I can determine where the hole of this polynomial is. It's at the point one and then f of one, where f is the simplified polynomial. So um, basically that means it's at, right, one comma, and then if I plugged one in here, I'd have one divided by one plus three, which is one fourth. Okay, so one comma one fourth. That's where, that is the X and Y coordinates of a whole. Graphically, this is what it would look like. Okay, this is the graph here, like this is a cutoff portion of the graph. We'll talk a lot more about that soon. But notice how the whole right here 
it, there's it, it literally is just a, a blank space it's like as if somebody just plucked that x value out of the graph and said there's a hole there okay so here's an example where we are going to figure out all of these things about a polynomial about this rational function these are things we can figure out about any function but for a rational function if we start by looking at the, the domain and its restrictions we can we can learn a lot and the way we're going to do that is start by simplifying uh, the rational function, which is to factor the top and the bottom. So if we factor the top and the bottom here, the top factor is the 3x minus 2 times uh, x plus 2. The bottom, we've already factored it before, it was, it was 5 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, now uh, we, can, we can see right away that there's going to be a domain restriction at x x is cannot equal 2 and x cannot equal negative 2 and so that means the domain of this as we actually did before is going to be from negative negative infinity to 2 to negative 2 sorry union negative 2 to 2 union 2 to infinity All right and what what are these kinds of discontinuities well see notice here that the x plus 2 factors is common so it cancels out and so what we really have is a simplified polynomial now where it's 3x minus 2 in the numerator divided by 5 times x minus 2. Okay, and in this case, x cannot equal negative 2. Okay, so that means that our that this x minus 2, this value that would make the denominator 0 of this simplified function, that is a vertical asymptote. So we could say there's a vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote, at uh, x equals negative, uh, sorry, x equals 2, and that there's a hole at, uh, if we were to plug this negative 2 back into this function here, we'd find the location of the hole. And so the hole, there's a hole at, and it'd be at the x coordinate of negative 2 and the y coordinate of 2 fifths, if you plug, if you plug that negative 2 back in, that's what you'll get. Okay, now, it's really easy to find x and y intercepts. Okay, x-intercepts occur when uh, when you set f of x equal to 0, right? When you set y equal to 0. So if we look at our, our simplified polynomial, or sorry, our simplified rational function, and we said 0 equals 3x minus 2 divided by 5 times x minus 2, uh, then what we would do is we could just... Uh, we could figure out when is this equal to zero. So when is a fraction equal to zero? A fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. Okay, so we set 3x minus 2 equal to zero, and we find that at x equals 2 thirds, there is a, an x-intercept, so the x-intercept is at 2 thirds, and then the y-value at an x-intercept is always zero. For y-intercepts, we just plug in zero for x. Okay, so f of zero is equal to a y-intercept. So for this one again, if we want to know where the y-intercept is, we'd say right the y-intercept is at three times zero minus two divided by five times zero minus two, so that'd be negative two on top divided by negative ten, so one fifth. Uh, that's just positive one fifth. So the y-intercept is at zero, comma one fifth. X coordinate of a y-intercept is always zero. Now the end behavior. This is kind of something you have to think about pretty carefully here. And it's possible to do this just by looking at it. And if we think about it, right, end behavior, remember, was the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity, it's supposed to be infinity, of f of x, right? That's what the end behavior is. So if we take turns by plugging in really big positive and really big negative values, we can figure out what the end behavior of this rational function is. So just really quickly, right, what would be f of like positive infinity and we're not actually going to use positive infinity we're going to use a really big number so what would this be well it would be three times huge big number right three times big number minus two so three times big number minus two two is such a small number that this is going to be three times really big number so think of it like maybe three x right uh divided by and then five times really big number minus two so really big number minus two. This number is so big that subtracting two basically means nothing. So consider that just a big number and we're multiplying that by five. So it'd be divided by five X. 
then the axis can cancel and we would have three fifths. So when we plug in a really humongous value for x, we're going to have three fifths. And that will be the same thing that happens if we plug in a really big negative value for, for x. So like if we had it be three times negative big divided by five times negative big, and we'd still cancel out the x's and we still have three fifths. So the end behavior here is that the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of this function f of x is equal to three fifths. That's the end behavior. All right, so let's just look at the graph of this real quick. Um, this is the this is the and we'll, we'll talk about how to generate this graph but this is the graph of this is the original function we had notice if i turn this new function on which was the simplified function uh it's the same thing right that function and that function they look exactly the same however we we, well, we also know that at x equals two there was that vertical asymptote i mean if we zoomed out really really far and then zoomed back in like we could see that that line doesn't ever quite touch it Simply put, that there's a domain restriction at x equals 2, and it's because there's a vertical asymptote there. It's a removable, uh, sorry, an infinite discontinuity. And then if we turn off our original function and we're looking at this simplified one, we can see that, actually, let's go back to the original one. If we were to zoom in, like if we were to like trace the values here, you can see that at that negative 2, we have an undefined. And the way we'd represent, we can determine where that is by plugging that negative 2 back into my simplified function. And that is a removable, well, I'm supposed to, that would be a uh, removable discontinuity. And so there's a hole right there in that, in that function of, uh, of at, at negative two comma two fifths. So that's the kind of, that's graphically what those look like. There's literally something plucked out of that graph.